How's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome back to Discipleship Discussions. I'm here with Dave Bean, and I am so excited to get into the Word this morning. We're um, going to start in Matthew chapter 6, um, starting in verse 5. I'm just going to go ahead and read that. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, and then he goes into our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so you have this simple prayer, mm -hmm. uh, a warning to not be hypocritical and pray to be heard and seen. And you have this don't heap up um, empty phrases, right. um, kind of babbling, um, kind of trying to demonstrably get God to answer, you know? And so, I mean, to me, the introduction... He, he says a lot in introducing um, the Lord's Prayer here in Matthew, where you kind of, he gives the parameters basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, and of course, the, the message this week was talking about um, our Father in heaven, just the personal nature yeah. of our relationship with God. I am so. um, getting to that, that babbling part, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, I know Rob talks a little bit about, um, conjuring up useless prayers and babbling on and on. And it reminds me of um, Elijah when he was facing the prophets of Baal for a cook-off, you know, that, that, that cook-off they had, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's what I call it. And, um, and you know, the prophets of Baal were just like screaming and yelling at God, eh, at their God, not the God, and, you know, right. and cutting themselves and like, come on, come on, working, you know, praying. And, and Elijah's just looking on him like, uh, you know, like well, maybe your God's on the toilet, you know, like what's, you know, and so <laughs> then when they're all done, he just like prays a simple prayer. He's just like, "Lord God in heaven, you're you know you're so great and amazing. Can you just please you know take care of this situation right now?" And poof, you know, that wasn't the exact prayer he prayed. <laughs> <laughs> Paraphrased, fire, yeah, David fire, Bean version. Yes, fire comes down and <laughs> and, and everyone's, you know, it's just because he knew who he was in the Lord, and and they didn't. They're worshiping a idol made by human hands that can't even talk or anything. And so, talk about you know. Um, not being in a relationship with your God, how can you be in a relationship with a telephone pole? You know, right? And so, then, <laughs> and uh, and in practical terms, and in, in our daily lives, it reminds me of. I've been around a lot of a lot of charismatic circles and seen a lot of things, and I'm I'm charismatic with a seatbelt, so I'm not dissing charismatics at all. Um, I I love the the wild and crazy things God does, but I've seen people praying for healing or deliverance, and they're just like. Ah, in the name of Jesus, ah, and, they're yelling, and they're yelling, and they're like, you know, like, come out, you, you know, <laughs> and, ah, and then like, seen it work, seen it not work, but I, the, the most effective prayers I've seen for healing and deliverance and all that is just like, like a, a humble heart where it's like, Lord, oh, this is only you can do this, you know, just please, just come now and heal this person in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know who you are, you're not... Some of those prayers seem to me rooted in fear. Like, I'm afraid that if I don't do this and do that, God's not going to... But if your identity is in Christ... Well, I think, you know, it's like, it's not limited, you know, by how we pray. Right. It's like, if 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 what God could do was limited by what, how we prayed, mm -hmm. then, you know, we'd be in charge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> True. So, so I, I forget how Myron says it. I'll probably get it wrong. I love the My Myronisms, yeah. but one of the things that he says is, "Don't pray, don't pray hard. Yeah, pray okay. easy. That's good because it's God who does it." Mm. And um, I just I like that um, heart. Mm -hmm. It's just it's more about who God is, yeah, and who we are as His children, 
And that's how he frames prayer, not as us coaxing mm-hmm. him to do what we want. Right. And, you know, I think at the very heart of prayer is a request. Like, you know, there's, there's always an aspect of prayer that is like, I need you, God. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's also, of course, relational as well. Like, I would need to be with you, and I want to talk to you. And, um, but like when, when I'm coming to God and I'm, and I'm in a position of demanding what he does, you know, it's definitely you're starting out in a different place than the simple prayer that Jesus gives them. Right. And I just love how meat and potatoes and practical and simple yeah. Jesus is and in, in his invitation. Like right. His invitation to prayer is like, stay with it, basically. Stick with it. Mm-hmm. Don't be fake. Be real. Be yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you're not trying to act. I just love it. I, to me, it's such a different introduction um, to a relationship with God than any other thing in the world. Yeah, you say you said uh, something. I can't remember exactly what you just said, but it made me think that, like, you know, God created all of us differently, and we're not all to pray the same way. And even though we have this framework, it's like we're all going to even approach this framework differently. And and uh, yeah, it's just uh, we all connect with God in different ways. And like, you know, there's some people who sing and dance and shout, and some who just like to be in their closet quietly. And and I feel like I, it's normal to struggle with prayer. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's important to talk about, like, even just simple things like, how do you pray before dinner? What does a prayer before you go to bed look like? And what does a prayer when you wake up in the morning look like? Does it have to be complicated and Mm -hmm. flowery? And yeah, it's like, I think it can be simple. Last night, my prayer was just like, I'm exhausted (laughs) and I can't sleep. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Mm -hmm. So here I am, and so what a what a perfect opportunity to pray. And I didn't pray a fancy prayer. I prayed a, I love you, God. Um, really need sleep. <laughs> yeah, help. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a fancy prayer. Yeah, and uh, but I don't know. Do you ever feel awkward when you pray? Not really, because I'm like you. I just, I mean, I I fear and revere and respect God. So mm-hmm. I don't want to make it sound like I don't respect, like I'm like, I am clay, you're the potter. Like I don't even pretend to be anywhere near, you know, God. But at the same time, I, I, I approach him like, you know, I've said this before, like he's the king of the world. He's, he is the king of the kingdom. He sits on the throne. You walk into the king's presence without him asking you to get your head cut off. But we're his kids, you know, we're yeah. his sons and daughters. And so I look at it as like, I can walk into my daddy's throne anytime I want and sit on his lap. He's not going to cut my head off. You know, right. it's like, you know, as a father, it's, I just, and then I look at my dog. I, I have a little chihuahua and she just wants to be in my lap all the time. And whenever she's on my lap, I just think, man, this is how I want to be with God. I just want to sit on his lap. Mm-hmm. But I say that out of full reverence and respect and fear of God. Like I don't take him lightly, but. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. I, I yeah. always feel, I think when I'm praying out loud, it's harder for me than when I'm praying in in my heart. Yeah. Like if I'm driving down the road and I'm by myself and I'm praying, that's um, easier for me. Mm-hmm. But like once once I start praying out loud, I start to feel self conscious and <laughs> and overly self aware, and I I think it's distracting because I'm thinking about how I'm being heard, and you know like don't pray like the hypocrites. Yeah. And I I can just it's almost like I'm tripping over what I'm trying not to do that trying not to sound like i'm being spiritual but not trying to you mean praying out loud in front of people in or people, by yourself okay in front of people by yourself okay yeah. yeah all right yeah i mean praying out loud by myself i think would be easy too compared yeah. to yeah but there's something about praying with people that sometimes it, you, i can feel really self-conscious and I, i'm overly thinking about what i what i sound like sometimes it helps me to write out a prayer. Even when I'm preaching, if I'm going to pray, I'll actually write my prayer out. So I'm oh, like, good. yes, that's really true. Mm-hmm. That's really from my heart. Yeah. That's really, and I don't, I don't wing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I get so uncomfortable yeah. in the middle of it. Yeah. I think a lot of people probably feel that way and they're like, I don't want to pray out loud. And it's like, 
it doesn't have to be complicated or fancy. And I don't think it's that weird yeah. to feel awkward because I think prayer is very intimate. Yeah. For me, praying out loud is awkward sometimes if I'm praying for someone else, like on the prayer team, because when I pray for someone else, I really try to like let there be moments of silence where I can hear from the Lord and that can be awkward. So like I <laughs> yeah. sometimes feel like I got to keep talking because there's too much silence. You don't want I, them to get uh, uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, but I do need to stop sometimes when I'm praying for somebody and just be feel like what's God having me say next. Hmm. It's just like a battle. You know? I love that. I love, yeah. But I love that the heart of listening while you pray because yeah. it's more of a conversation then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, there's so much to unpack about prayer. I mean, we could talk about prayer for a year. Yeah. Um, we could pray about it. <laughs> we, could, we could pray about prayer. Yeah. But I love this uh, series. I'm. It's already impacting like how I'm thinking about prayer. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's helping me to think about prayer in a different way. I've been, I don't know, probably four or five times I've gone through a sermon series where we go through the Lord's Prayer in my life. Okay. And this, has, you know, is completely a different, um, it's like a, for the first time I'm hearing it. That's good. It's, it feels fresh. Yeah. And so I was just telling Rob, I texted him this morning and just said, Rob, this is already impacting my prayer life. Yeah. And, um, but um, what I'm excited about f- for um, for the group is, yes, we need to talk about it, and yes, we need to think about it. But as a group practice, try as a group praying. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> so I, I, I want to challenge the life groups to practice prayer and, not, and leave enough room mm-hmm. You know, for there to be some space for everybody to pray. And everyone can awkwardly pray a prayer, even if it's not perfect or they don't know how to word it or, and just um, try Mm -hmm. coming to God in a simple way, asking for what it is that you need in your life, or even just telling Him where you're at. Yeah. Um, And so maybe in a new way, like you could tell God where you're at with people. That's good. And so I, yeah. I would love it if, if in the groups there were, um, yes, you get into the Word and talk about, but make sure that there's some room for practicing. Yeah, because, I mean, don't be just hearers, only be doers. Right. And so if we, we can talk about prayer all we want, but if we're not doing it, then, <laughs> right. yeah. It's one thing to talk about it, yeah. and it's a totally different thing to do it. Yeah. And to believe God for some things that maybe you've you know, stopped asking for, or mm-hmm. to tell God something out loud that other for other people get to listen in. Yeah, um, it's just a completely different thing. And so, um, whether you're like me and you feel awkward, or whether there's awkward silences, or even if it even if it's difficult for you, um, try throwing out an authentic, simple prayer. Yeah, because there's together. no wrong way to pray. You can't do that wrong. Yeah. Unless you're praying to a telephone pole. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So anything else you would add about? Um, I, to me, this is the best one that Rob's done so far on prayer. I, I agree. This is like really eye-opening. I I mean, it, prayer, the word is like prayer. Prayer is like the word. Like you, you can always learn something new. You th- like you're never an expert on prayer. And that's right. the problem. If you think you're an expert on prayer, then just go home. <laughs> <You're> never, <laughs> no, you, you we don't always want you learning. in our life groups. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I would just echo... You know, um, the whole relationship thing, it's like how you talk to your kids, how you talk to your wife, how you talk to your best friend. You know, imagine when you're dating your your boyfriend or girlfriend before you're married, you know, you just, you wanted to be with them. You want to spend time with them. You wanted to like gush over them and you wanted to, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? You know, can I come over? What you, you know, it's like, that's like the way God wants us to be with him. Yeah. So. And, you know, the practice of it opens up parts of our hearts and our spiritual life. Mm-hmm that you can't really um, get at without s- actually praying. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, you, you can think about it a lot, mm-hmm. but but there's some things that only happen if you talk. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the same thing's true in a relationship. It's like, it's like sometimes you just got to talk it out. Sometimes you just got to, and if you don't, your relationship's going to stagnate. Yeah, and you're going to be miserable. Right. Like, and who is this person I'm living with? I don't even know them anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can be together and very lonely. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of people that follow God and are, are you know, 
want to, to be close to God, mm-hmm. but they don't ever talk to him. Yeah. And um, they don't leave any room for him to talk to them. Yeah. So let's let's practice in our cars and you know around our dinner tables and and in our life groups this week. You mean I got to turn the radio off in my car? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is great. Uh, have a great discussion. I'm looking forward to hearing how it goes as you guys are practicing. Um, we always want to. We love to hear what's going on in the groups. So when you get your little um, email that says, "Hey, check who was there." Put a little in the comments what God's doing, and um, it, yeah. it helps us to know um, how to pray. 